Hey there, dude, so first, today I'm going to show you how you can test and diagnose problems with your camshaft or crankshaft position sensor. Now, it's crucial that you know how to properly test these sensors because as some of you may know, a bad crankshaft position sensor or uh, depending on your car's make and model, a bad camshaft position sensor could cause a crank but a no start condition. That's because if you have a bad crankshaft position sensor, you're not going to be able to get spark at your spark plugs and therefore your engine is not going to run. But if you have stumbled upon this video because you have a no crank, no start condition, uh, I'll suggest you watch this video, which I made recently. I'll put a link to it right here on the side of the screen, also link in the description box. And that video, I go in uh, pretty high detail on how to diagnose a no crank, no start condition. And as far as where these sensors are located, your crankshaft position sensor is gonna be usually on the bottom of the engine, right by your crankshaft gear, behind your harmonic balancer usually. But there are a few applications out there where the crankshaft position sensor is located on the back of the engine on the bell housing. And your camshaft position sensors are usually going to be located towards the top of the engine behind your camshaft gears. Now there are more than a few different types of camshaft or crankshaft position sensors, but for this video we're just going to concentrate on the two most common ones. And the first one is going to be this magnetic type sensor. Now these sensors will almost always have only two wires going to them, and these sensors produce their own voltage. And the way these sensors produce their own voltage is that when your uh, crankshaft or camshaft gear turns right in front of your sensors, the, th the teeth that are on your gear are going to stimulate the magnetic field at the end of these sensors. And then your sensor is going to produce an AC voltage uh, that's then sent to your uh, electronic control module through this wiring harness connector. Now I'm going to do these testing procedures right here on this bench, but you don't have to remove your sensor. You can just do these tests on the car. First things first, you want to closely take a look at the plastic housing of your sensor. If you see any major cracks or signs of damage or if it's bent out of shape, then that could potentially mean that you got a bad sensor. After that, we're going to do the resistance test. So you get your multimeter, put it on your ohm settings, and this Subaru crankshaft position sensor is supposed to have about 2,000 to 2,500 ohms of resistance. So I'm going to choose 20,000 ohms on, my, uh, on the scale of this multimeter. And then we'll take our measurement. And as you can see, we got 2.01 thousand ohms of resistance, or in other words, 2,010 ohms. Also, it's very important to check the condition of the connector for your sensor as well. Sometimes oil or uh, you know dirt and mud gets on this sensor and causes all sorts of problems. But if it looks clean or if you clean it, then it's a good idea to check and make sure that you have ground at this sensor. So what you want to do next is to ground your uh, black test lead and it doesn't have to be to your battery, you can just ground it through your engine or chassis. And then we go over to our multimeter and we're going to choose this setting for continuity, which will also hear a beep if we do have continuity. And with our other test lead, we're going to test the uh, ground wire and if we hear a beep, that means we got ground and we're good there. And the last but most important test of all is to test whether the sensor can put out voltage. Again, these sensors put out AC voltage, so you want to get your multimeter and put it on uh, AC volts. And we're going to go with 2 volts since most of these sensors only put out about 0.2 to you know, almost 2 volts. Now a scope would be a much better tool to use uh, in order to measure the voltage that's coming out of these sensors, but since I'm going to assume most people don't have one of those, we're just going to use this multimeter. And if you're going to be doing this on the car, as, your, as the engine cranks, you know, you may not get, you might not see the voltage go up and down uh, as it's supposed to because your multimeter may not be able to keep up. But you may just see just one solid reading, let's say like 0.15 uh, volts being put out by the sensor. But that usually means that you got a good sensor, uh, or in other words, a sensor that can put out voltage. And if you're bench testing this, this is basically what you're going to see. As you move this gear past the sensor, you know, you're going to see the sensor produce a very tiny amount of uh, AC voltage. For some reason this works better. Alright, next up, these three wire sensors. Now unlike the previous sensor, these sensors, they don't produce their own voltage and they require 12 volts to operate. So basically they receive 12 DC volts from your ECU and then based on the position of the, the, the teeth on your gear, they make adjustments to that voltage and then they send that voltage as a form of a you know, signal voltage back to your ECU. They also have a grounding wire as well. So with the key on or in the cranking position, you'll always have a constant supply of 12 volts to these sensors. You'll also always have a constant ground. And if you want to test these sensors, you want to make sure first you ground your black test lead. And then you want to put your uh, setting on your multimeter to DC volts. 
and are constant. Sometimes it's 12 volts, other times it's 5 volts. Just depends on your car's make and model, but all of those are going to be less than 20 volts, so we're going to go with 20 volts on this setting. And then you want to remove the wiring harness for your connector and then test each pin and the one that gives you voltage, you know that's your constant wire. So here in our case it's going to be this third and last one, which is giving us 12.2 volts. So we're going to write this one down, this red one, as our constant wire. So next we're going to find our ground wire from the two remaining wires. So while our black Tesla is still grounded, we put our settings on our multimeter back to ohms. And then we test the two remaining pins. And the one where we got next to no resistance, we put down as our ground wire. And therefore, right now we've not only verified that we're getting voltage, but also we have a constant ground and the remaining wire has to be our signal wire. Now as far as how you can test these, basically you test these on the car. You get your multimeter, put your setting to 20 DC volts, and then you'll need to back probe your ground and signal wire, and then connect these to your testes by these alligator clips. And if you want to have an easy job of doing that, make sure you use some paper clips to back probe these. And then with the engine cranking or running, you will see the voltage that's coming out of your signal wire. And again, you're not gonna see it go up and down like it's supposed to, but you know, it will verify that your, your sensor is putting out voltage. And that's all there is to it, folks. Now I'm gonna put some other videos where I use the multimeter to test other sensors on the screen, so you can just click on them. But if you find anything in this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more like it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.